educational program is designed to give a concise but thorough overview of umbilical cord blood banking. In just a few minutes, you'll be able to understand what are the current and potential uses for umbilical cord blood, who can benefit from it, and what are your options for collection and storage of your child's umbilical cord blood. In many states, practitioners are legally mandated to educate every pregnant patient about their options for collecting and storing their child's umbilical cord blood. At the end of this presentation, you'll be asked to attest that you have reviewed and understand the information presented here. This electronic signature will be sent to your doctor as a record of your education on this topic. Before we discuss your options in detail, I'd like to give you a brief overview of umbilical cord blood and its uses. If you'd like more details, I encourage you to look at the resources we provide at the end of this presentation. Once your child is born, the delivering physician clamps off the umbilical cord and the cord is cut to separate the baby from your body. Usually within a few minutes, the placenta which is connected to the rest of the umbilical cord separates from the uterus and is removed through the vagina or through your abdomen in the case of a cesarean section. The placenta and portion of the umbilical cord connected to it are full of a portion of the baby's blood that would ordinarily be thrown away as medical waste. It has been discovered, however, that this blood contains millions of stem cells that could potentially be used to treat many childhood and adult diseases. Stem cells are unique in that they possess the ability to transform into many other types of cells that have various roles throughout the body. Stem cells harvested from the umbilical cord have been used successfully in the treatment of nearly 80 life-threatening diseases, including a wide range of cancer, genetic diseases, immune system deficiencies, and blood disorders. Stem cell transplants also have improved the life of children with cerebral palsy and other neurological conditions. Studies are underway to evaluate many other potential uses of stem cells, including heart disease, diabetes, stroke, and various types of traumatic injury. Adults have stem cells in their bloodstream as well. However, the number of those stem cells and their ability to transform into vital tissues declines dramatically after birth. Let's talk a moment about who could benefit from the stem cells in your child's umbilical cord. If you bank your child's cord blood, you'll have stem cells that are guaranteed to be a 100% match for that child. Since these stem cells are from your child's umbilical cord, there would be no risk of rejection if used in treatments for that child. However, with some diseases, it is not helpful to receive your own stem cells. For example, if your child is born with a genetic blood disorder, it may be helpful to receive stem cells from a donor who does not have that same genetic disorder. In such a situation, stem cells from a sibling often make a great alternative. About 39% of the time, cord blood from one sibling can be used as a treatment for another sibling. Not only are siblings likely to be a good match, transplants that use cord blood from a family member, such as a sibling, are twice as successful as transplants that use cord blood from a non-relative. Many people ask, what is the likelihood for their child or another family member to ever need stem cell therapy? It's very difficult to accurately answer this question, especially since technology is constantly changing and the indication for stem cell use keeps growing. Taking into account only currently available therapies, the odds that an individual will need a stem cell transplant has been estimated to be between one in several hundred to one in several thousand. However, as both the list of treatment indications and your family expand, the odds that any member of your family will need a stem cell transplant expands as well. If you choose to collect your child's cord blood, your physician will use a kit similar to this one to drain the stem cells from the umbilical cord into a special storage bag. This process is done in a similar way during cesarean sections as well. The amount of blood obtained depends on several factors including the size of your baby and placenta and the length and thickness of your baby's umbilical cord. In most cases, your physician will be able to collect this blood without difficulty. However, in some instances, such as if the placenta separates from your body quicker than usual or if you're having more bleeding than is typical, your physician may not be able to collect the cord blood. Once the blood is collected, the sample is properly labeled, packaged, and prepared for pickup to the processing facility. Now that you have a better understanding of umbilical cord blood and its uses, let's review your options and the decisions you should make prior to your delivery. Cord blood donation. Some states have public banks for the storage of cord blood. These banks will typically take your cord blood and process it with no fee to you. 
your child's cord blood may be available to anyone seeking stem cell transplantation. However, for various reasons, it may not be available specifically for your child or another family member if you should need it. You can visit bethematch.org to find out if there is a public bank in your area or to see how else you can help. Private banking. There are a number of companies that offer you the ability to collect and store your child's cord blood specifically for the benefit of your family. You must register with one of these companies prior to the birth of your child. Typically, there's an initial collection fee and a yearly storage fee for this service. Cord blood disposal. If you do not choose to donate or store your child's cord blood, your physician will dispose of it as medical waste. Although your delivery may seem far away at this point, you must decide which option you're choosing prior to your child's birth. If you're not prepared at the birth of your child with a collection kit for storage or donation, then your physician will usually have no choice but to dispose of the cord blood. If you have any further questions, please be sure to talk with your health care provider at your next visit. Some private cord blood storage companies offer you the ability to store a segment of the baby's umbilical cord as well. The umbilical cord tissue is a rich source of cells called mesenchymal cells. These cells have the ability to transform into various types of tissue, such as bone, cartilage, and tendons. There are many studies underway to explore possible uses for mesenchymal cells from the umbilical cord tissue. Many researchers are optimistic that mesenchymal cells will be useful in the treatment of brain, spinal cord, musculoskeletal, and other diseases and injuries. However, there are not yet any available human therapies using mesenchymal cells. I hope you have found this presentation useful. Please take a moment to read the statements below and make the appropriate selection for each. I wish you the best of luck with the rest of your pregnancy.